ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله ثم اما بعد uh, it gives me great pleasure an honor to be able to serve this community. Uh, this is a community that um, I have a long history with. In fact, one of my friends was uh, talking to me the other day and he said, do you remember the time when you hurt your hand and sprained your hand? This is maybe 20 years ago, back when this building was not yet built and it was in the house. So Alhamdulillah, I have a very long history uh, with this community. It gives me great pleasure uh, and honor to serve this community. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this is not the first time that I've stood and give the khutbah here and inshallah ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless this community and all of its members the name of this masjid is Masjid As-Siddiq Masjid As-Siddiq As-Siddiq is a title that is given a specific title that was given to Abu Bakr radiallahu an the foremost companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sahibuhu fil ghar the one who is his companion in the cave and this is the only person mentioned who Allah calls him the companion, his companion. When they were in that cave and Abu Bakr was beginning to panic and the Prophet Sallallahu comforted him and he said to his companion, Do not be afraid, do not be, be, be alarmed. This is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu the title that was given to him because of his immense conviction and his high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also a generic title given to anyone who has reached this level of certainty and conviction and truthfulness and deeds and this category of people, no one is higher than, higher than them except for the prophets and messengers. As Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنَّعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, they will be with those who, have, who, Allah, who Allah has favored from the prophet, prophets, من النبيين. Right after that, الصِّدِّيقِين. And then the third category, الشُهَدَاء, the martyrs, والصَّالِحِينَ and the righteous. These are the people we want to be with and these are the people we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with every single time we recite Surah Al-Fatiha inside of Salah and outside of our Salah. What do we say in our Al-Fatiha every single day? إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Guide us to the, to the straight path. The path of who? الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those who you have favored. And who are those who have been favored? Mentioned in this verse. فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ So these are the Siddiqeen. This rank of people, just under them are the Prophets. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an is the greatest man who has walked the face of the earth after all of the Prophets and Messengers. No one greater has walked the face of the earth after all of the Prophets and Messengers except Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. And what caused him to get this? What caused him to attain the status that no one else attained besides him? 
And very simply, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, he beat everyone. He beat everyone. He, will, he was always the first for everything. And he is as Ali radiallahu anhum is reported to have described him, who was sabaq. He was the first. No one was able to compete with Abu Bakr radiallahu an in deeds. Anytime there was a good deed, Abu Bakr was there first. During the Battle of Tabuk, Umar radiallahu an tried to compete with Abu Bakr. Umar says that I got some wealth and I was intending to donate this fi sabilillah to fund the army. During the Battle of Tabuk, the army was in need, desperate need of funds. And so Umar, he came across some wealth and he said that today I'm going to beat Abu Bakr because I have come across a lot of money and I'm going to donate half of my wealth for the army, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he, he goes and he gives the, his wealth, half of his wealth, to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Abu Bakr comes, and he comes and he gives all of his wealth. To the point where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, ماذا أبقيت لأهلك? What did you leave for your family? قال أبقيت لهم الله ورسوله. I left for them Allah and his Messenger. After that, Umar radiallahu anh said, I'm not ever going to compete with Abu Bakr ever again. We, 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 he, he's somebody who cannot be beaten. He, we cannot beat him. We cannot compete with somebody like this. Uh, in other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was in a gathering with his companions. And he was asking them, who amongst you has, is fasting today? Abu Bakr said, I am. Who amongst you has followed a janazah today? Abu Bakr said, I did. Who amongst you have visited the sick today? Abu Bakr said, I did. Every time the Prophet is asking a question, Abu Bakr is saying, I did, I did, I did. Showing that there is no deed, no good deed except that he was the first to it. In another hadith, the Prophet is talking about the gates of paradise and mentioning the various gates. And the gates of paradise, the believers who excelled in certain deeds, will be called from specific gates. So if you excelled in salah, yud'a min abwaab salah He will be called from the gates of salah. Whoever excelled in sadaqah will be called from the gates of sadaqah. Whoever excelled in fasting will be called from the gate of ar rayyan And then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu asks a question. He says, will anybody be entering from all of these gates? Will anybody be called from all of these gates? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, na'am. Yes, and I hope that you will be from those who are invited from all of the gates of paradise. So this was uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, the first, the one who no one can compete with. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an is a personification of a theme that we find in the Quran. And that theme is rushing towards good deeds, rushing towards performing good deeds. And we find this throughout the Quran. Allah says, Sabiqu ila maqfiratim mir rabbikum. Wa sari'u ila maqfiratim mir rabbikum. Race towards the forgiveness of your Lord. Rush towards the forgiveness of your Lord. Fastabiqu al khayrat. Race towards doing good. Wa sabiqun al sabiqun. And the foremost, and the foremost. This is a theme that we find in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging us to rush and hasten towards good deeds. Why the rush? Why should we rush towards good? Because in reality, the time that we think we have, we don't really have. And there are many people who are buried under the ground, who have returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who thought that they had this time, and it wasn't until they passed away that they realized that they didn't have this time. So we rush towards good because our souls can be taken at any moment. And we don't want to be like those people who when the time of death comes, then they realize that they didn't do what they wanted to do. And they beg for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return them. When death comes to one of them, they say, oh my Lord, return me. Perhaps I will do good deeds which I left behind and I intended to do. Kalla innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. No, this is just a, a word 
that they're saying has no meaning. Once they have, their soul has been taken, that's it. They are into the next life and there is no return. So we rush towards good deeds because the time will come and we don't know when that time is where deeds will no longer be accepted. Deeds will no longer be accepted. So spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before death comes to any one of you. And this person, when the death comes to them and they had intended to give the sadaqah, they say, Oh my Lord, perhaps delay it a bit. So that I can give the charity and be from those who are righteous. But once the time comes, that's it. So we rush towards good because the death can come at any time. And we don't want to be from those who intended to do good and never got the chance to do it. And also because many deeds are time sensitive. Many deeds, many virtues are time sensitive. If you don't jump on it, it will go. And we see this in the dunya all the time. Things, the best things, they, they go quickly. If you don't take advantage of it and rush towards it, it's going to be gone. The other day I was shopping for a car and I went to the, the dealership and five minutes earlier a person came to look at that car they took the test drive before I could even take a test drive and look at the vehicle the vehicle's already sold the person got there five minutes earlier and they agreed and they signed the contract and the vehicle was sold this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if I had come five minutes earlier then perhaps I would have bought that vehicle in a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to the companions about those who will enter paradise. And he says that amongst his ummah, there will be 70,000 who will enter into paradise without any reckoning. Without any reckoning, without any punishment. And then he went on to describe those who will be of those who enter into paradise without any reckoning. And he mentions a number of different qualities. And there was a companion by the name of Ukash ibn Mihsan who stood up and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ud'u Allaha an akuna minhum O Messenger of Allah, make dua that I be from amongst them And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahumma ja'alhu minhum O Allah, make him from them In other narrations, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you are from them And so right there and then, because of this dua that he asked for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was given glad, uh, glad tidings of paradise. Another man stood up right after that and he asked the same thing, same request from the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Sabaqaka biha ukash. Ukash beat you to it. He preceded you. And he was not given what Ukash was given. If he had been a bit quicker, he would have been from those who the Messenger ﷺ gave the glad tidings of paradise. But he was a bit slow. Ukasha beat him to it. And so he was given the glad tidings of paradise. And this man who stood up after and asked the same thing from the Messenger وسلم, was not given those glad tidings. We find also in the, in the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, that uh, the Sahaba are those who met and saw the Prophet. وسلم. They had the honor of seeing and meeting and interacting with the Prophet. There were people who lived during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. They lived during his time, but they never got to see him because they were maybe from a different country in Yemen or in uh, Sham or other places and they did not have the opportunity to travel and see the Prophet ﷺ and meet him. And some of these people, the Prophet ﷺ died and they never got a chance to meet him and have that honor of being from amongst the Sahaba. There was one person in, in particular he arrived in Al Madinah the day they buried the Prophet. ﷺ. The day they buried him. If he had come a few days earlier, he would have attained the rank of Sahaba. But he settles with the lower rank of Tabi'een, which is good. As the Prophet ﷺ says, The best of generations is my generation, then those that follow, and those that follow. So the generation after the, the Sahaba are the Tabi'een. And this is a high rank, but it's not like the Sahaba. It's not like being from amongst these Sahaba. <clears throat> so we find that being first and rushing towards good 
is something extremely important. Important. If you do not do that, you risk losing many virtues. You risk losing out on many virtues. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the companions specifically, those who were there from the very beginning. Those who were there from the very beginning. As Allah says in the Quran, and though the foremost from amongst the Muhajireen, those who immigrated, and the Ansar, the helpers in Medina. And then he praises the rest of the companions after. And the companions have a general praise. Allah is pleased with all of the companions. But those who accepted Islam early and were there from the very beginning and made the sacrifices, they are much higher rank than those who came later on. As Allah says in the, in the Quran, لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتل. It's not equal. Those who, who spent and fought before the conquest of Mecca, those who were there from the very beginning and made the sacrifice and accepted Islam, they are a higher rank. أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا. Those are a higher rank than those who spent and fought after the conquest of Mecca, when the Muslims are, had already been, been, become victorious. They are not the same. Those who were there from the beginning have a higher rank. And Allah has promised both, both parties good. All of them, Allah is pleased with them. But those who were there from the beginning are not like those who came after. Abu Bakr radiallahu an is not like those who came after him. And so, as a community, we want to be from those who rush towards good and be at the foremost and be at the, the head and the lead. This is the goal of this community, inshallah ta'ala, to be from the sabiqeen those who are foremost and take the lead and are at the front. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa afdal as-salati wa atamu at-taslim ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in There are many deeds that are time sensitive many good deeds are time sensitive if you do not rush towards it you lose the virtue of those deeds first and foremost is the salah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked what is the best deed and he replied as-salatu ala waqtiha the per performing the salah in its correct time. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. Salah has been prescribed upon the believers in, pers in, in, in prescribed time, prescribed times. Salah is one of these deeds that if you do not rush towards it and you delay it, then you lose the, the, the reward of those who pray in the beginning time. And you can still catch in the middle time or the end, but it's not like praying at the very beginning, which the Prophet ﷺ says, this is, is the best of deeds. Also, from the deeds that are time sensitive, is patience, being patient in the face of calamities. When calamities strike, when is the time to be patient? At the very beginning. Not when the, the emotion has already finished and gone, and then you decide, I'm going to be patient now. The patience comes right at the very beginning. There was a woman who was burying her child. She was burying her child. And the Prophet ﷺ passed by her. And she did not see him. He was behind. And he saw her crying. And he advised her to fear Allah and be patient. And not knowing who this was, she responded in a kind of a rude manner. And she said, essentially, go away. You don't know what I'm going through. She did not know this was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Later on, she came to find out that that was the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, she became very uh, regretful, sorrow, sorrowful for what she, what she said. Of course, this is not something you'd ever say to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she went to apologize to him. And he accepted her apology, but he also told her something. إِنَّمَا الصَّدْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى That patience is at the first strike, the first strike of calamity. This is when patience is. If you don't have patience at the very beginning, there is no patience after that. It's not for a person that when a calamity strikes, 
they start to uh, feel, uh, cry and shout and scream and do anything that indicates displeasure. And then when all of their emotion has finished, then they say, I'm going to be patient now. The time has finished by that. Also from these that are time sensitive is shukr. When we receive good news or a bounty or a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right away. And there's a specific action we do which is called sujood shukr, the sajda of, of, of thankfulness. The scholars have mentioned that when you receive the good news of something, the time to make that sajda is as soon as you hear it. If you don't make that sajda and you leave it off, then the time has, uh, the time has passed. You cannot make that sajda anymore as sajda to shukr. So this is also one of these deeds that if you don't rush towards it the first time, then it's gone. Also, from the deeds <coughs> that are time sensitive is renewing, renewing broken ties. Sometimes there are issues and disagreements between people. And a person might end up boycotting his fellow Muslim brother or sister. And the Prophet ﷺ says that it is not permissible. لا يحلو لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه المسلم فوق الثلاثة. That it is not permissible for a believer to abandon and boycott his brother for more than three days. So once you, you know, there's a three-day cooling off period. If you have a disagreement with somebody, you take three days, and then after that, it's not permissible anymore for you to uh, to ignore that person or boycott that person. And then the Prophet ﷺ says. But the best of them, the best of the two is the one who initiates the salam, the one who reaches out first. So if you don't reach out first, then you are, you've lost that virtue of being from, as the Prophet ﷺ describes, the best of the two. The best of the two is the one who reaches out first. I'm, I apologize. Or we had a misunderstanding. Let's come and talk about it. This is the best of the two. The one who initiates the salam and initiates the reconciliation process. Also from the deeds or the, uh, the things that are time sensitive is making use of our morning, beginning of the day. The day is long, but not all of the day is the same. The Prophet ﷺ made dua specifically for his ummah to be blessed in the morning. Burika li ummati fi bukuriha. That he says that my ummah has been blessed in the morning. And so the morning is the time where there is barakah. If you, and you wake up late, you lose out on a time where the Prophet ﷺ says is a blessed time for his ummah. So these are just some of the uh, deeds that are time sensitive. And we leave off with another very important one directed to youth, which is the time of your youth is also time sensitive. If you lose that time of your youth, and you waste it in other than worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't come back. And the Prophet sallallahu mentions in the hadith, سَبَعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّي يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ذِلُّ That there are seven categories of people who Allah will shade on the day on which there is no, in which there is no shade except for His shade. And from amongst these seven, He mentions شَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ A youth who has grown up, been raised, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you pass this stage, then it's not coming back. You've lost a grand opportunity, a golden opportunity. So message to the youth, this is the time. It's not coming back. You have the chance now to be from amongst those who earn the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a day when there is no shade. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make from amongst those who listen to the speech and accept the best of it. Allahumma ja'alna minal ladheena istami'oona al-qawla fa yattabi'oona ahsana. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربي آتنا نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليّنا ومولانا أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصلاة